Hello, hello. Hey, it's Bruce coming back at you today. How y'all doing today? All right, so uh, today I just want to thank you for joining me. Um, I want to play my inspirational song. Amen. Amen. I know I'm going to get there one day. Put the drink down. Put the dang down. Yeah. Get your mind right. Get your, get your, get your mind right. Amen. Just wanted to pump myself up a little bit there. Pump it up. Amen. So I want to pray it up today. Genesis chapter one. Praise God. Amen. I'll pray real quick. <clears throat> Dear God, we thank you for this wonderful day today, Lord. Just coming before you, Lord, and just asking for your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding for all those who are here and even for myself, oh God. We thank you for the Bible study, Lord. This uh 10-minute power session, Lord. We just ask you to be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is my 10-minute workout, you know, in the scriptures. Um, just decided to get on here and share with somebody. Um, hey, it feels good, you know, it feels good doing what Jesus tells us to do, you know, all the time. So, um, you know, walking with the Lord, you know, is one thing um, and doing the best you can. And then, you know, his, his, his commission and to share the word of God and share the gospel, man, you know, great feeling. Today I'm going to be coming out of Genesis chapter one, as I said already. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but um, majority of people know Genesis chapter one. They know what it's about, you know. Um, so as I go through Genesis chapter one, um, I would like I would like to emphasize on a couple things. Uh, mostly one thing that I see, and really what I'm doing is I'm emphasizing on things that's problematic in the world nowadays. Not just, you know, every single last verse, because uh, like I say, we all know how it starts. Um, most of us do, at least. Uh, in, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and the earth. And he first day he created this, second day, third day, fourth, and so on. He created all these things, <clears throat> uh, the seas, the lights, okay? So what I want to um, jump down to here um, is in chapter one, the most, the most important thing that I want to jump on is in chapter one, verse 29. Amen. Now, now what I want to emphasize on, okay, actually, I want to start at 26. Now, he says that all the fish of the sea, uh, all right, the fowl of the air, the cattle, every creeping thing, all right? Amen. Um, now, every fowl, every air bearing seed, every tree, every fruit, every beast of the field, every fowl, everything is for meat. Now, um, I'm, I'm going to get into this a little bit. Now, if we look around and we think about all the stuff that the supermarket sells and everything, everything that everybody sells, it's a lot. It's a lot of meat. It's a lot of um, it's a lot of fruits and vegetables. But I have to say that one thing that I don't see a lot of is herb. Now we got we got the spices, so I can't say we don't have it. it there's a lot of it out there, but there is herb, and and I, I just want to emphasize on that. Um, uh, now I. I I'm getting into this because I think it's important. Um, you know, I know I skipped the majority of the first thing, but the thing is now, if we think about, now I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and jump out and say this. I got my notes right here. I've been, you know, thinking about some stuff. You know, what percentage of fruits and vegetables, what percentage of meats do people sell on the market? When you go through a grocery store, you may see a half a section of herbs. It ain't Walmart. You got a little, you know. So this is the thing I'm asking. I mean, is this is this not a problem? You know, when we got this meat, that meat, I, all these things, and of course, I, I don't. You know, he said all the beasts of the field for man's meat. First of all, but the thing, the problem is though, why are we not? Why are we not following this? This or the things that God said to do. You know, I mean, it, it's sitting here telling you that the herbs of the of every herb bearing seed 
is for man for man's uh for man's meat. Hey. Like I said, now now I'm gonna let you know that there is some effects, you know, uh we can look in the story of Jacob and um and I think it was uh, yeah, Leah. <laughs> so uh, be moderate with some of that stuff because it can be very powerful. But I just want to share that today and just put it out there, man, and share it with somebody, man. You know, the, the, I mean, the very first chapter, number one, you know what I mean, shares with us God's diet plan. He, he told you meat, fruit, vegetable, herb. But for some reason, we only emphasize on meat, fruit, and vegetable. I mean, we put little spices on our food and stuff like that. But you know, when somebody go out there and get some herbs, it, it's a strange thing, you know. But and God, he got tea, we got um, spices. I'm talking about the actual herb that God categorized with every other meat. And that's how I see it. That's how I see it. I'm looking like it said meat, it said fruit. It said... So, you know, I'm gonna, make a, I'm gonna make a point too. See my time there. I'm gonna make a point that, um, think about drug dealers. Now, some people, you know, like, it may be a little offensive. I, you, know, I don't, you know, I ain't trying to, but, Drug dealers, look how much money they're making. Why do you think that is? I'm going to tell you why it is. Because the devil knows the power of God's creation. I mean, think about it, man. You know, we, we don't know uh, how many, how much percentage of what they're putting in there. But I guarantee you, there is percentage of natural plants, natural herbs inside of these drugs. I'm talking about street drugs. And I'm talking about prescription drugs, too. You know, and the thing is... They don't sell it to us full potency. They, put, they mix it up with a whole bunch of stuff, whatever, paint, man, all kinds of uh, poison. I don't know, you know, rat poison. I heard all bunch of crazy stuff, whatever. But if they can sell it, you know. Um, but see, this, this, that's the thing. That's why it's so powerful. And, you know, and the thing is, some say, well, man, Johns ain't got no natural stuff in it. Yes, it does, too. Yes, it does. They, they make that stuff from natural thirst and, and, and billionaires. Millionaires, millions of dollars. Why? The devil knows the power of God's creation. Hmm? Yeah. Hey, you know, it, it, the, the Bible, you know, so the Bible is clear, man. This is this is God's plan, you know, and uh, man, I'm telling you, man. So, um, yeah. And like I said already, you know, I would advise moderation with a lot of these things because especially as a man of God, you know, there is um, uh, some things that can be, you know, uh, sexually stimulant. So, but there is also other things for all aspects of life. And um, so, so not just, but in any aspect, I would be moderate, but especially when it's something that may cause you to become, you know, more vibrant in certain areas uh, as your sexuality or your vitality. You want to be careful with that, especially as a man of God, this, you know, uh, just walk in the pure walk. So I just want to throw that in there. Um, I just want to express the importance, man, of, uh, of the first chapter, you know, the overall diet plan, like I said. Um, and, and I also want to interject a little more, too. And uh, Lord willing, when we chop it down each chapter, um, excuse me, the light off, but I'll be, I'm going to chop down each chapter. Um, excuse me, I'm going to cut this on real quick. Be right back. There we go, automatic. Didn't even have to <laughs> praise God. All right, but um, so yeah, um, I want to also interject too. Why is stewardship? This right here could be absolutely why is stewardship. And I'm gonna tell you from a financial point of view, we already know from a health point of view, we are pretty obvious, you know, from a health. But you know, the thing is, hey, if you have more energy, you make can make more money, you know. Um, have better ideas, your brain is functioning more correctly. Um, okay. Now, now, real now, I know a lot of people are already, you know, they're like, man, I already know, man, you know, I got under control. Now, I do want to say one thing though. If you look at, if you think about, if I buy a twenty-five dollar bottle of multivitamins or ten dollar bottle, just tell about it. Now, we have to think about it. There could be a void in our system that God created to be filled with, um, instead of filled with an excessive amount of food, it may have been meant to be filled with certain nutrients and herbs that God naturally created. So what I want to say is, though, is that we could be overspending 
on stuff we don't really need as far as food-wise. We could be overeating, you know, as, as a fulfillment of that void that's there that's not being filled by one of God's, what, five or six different foods in the first chapter of Genesis that he created to be eaten, herbs. You know, we're talking about herbs that help blood flow, herbs that um, give energy, uh, you know, cognitive skills, uh, improvement, uh, herbs. So all these things. And like I said, you know, this is just a, this is really just a Bible study. But uh, as I go through this, whatever God's laid on my heart, I'm just putting it out there. I'm sharing what God has gave me the sharpening skills to sharpen others with. So, uh, you know, anything else I'm, you know, trying to touch on. But this is the number one thing that I really am seeing in this world today, that there is not a whole lot of, you know, things in this area. But don't need, need this to repeat myself. Um, but so, yeah, like I said, you know, um, if I can go buy a $20 bottle of vitamins, but I go buy, you know, more food because I don't have those vitamins, then really I'm spending more money. So I'm saying because I may be needing to, my body may be craving or desiring uh, more fulfillment through nutrients, but I don't get it through eating more and more. I, you know, my body's just eating more and more because it needs some nutrients, but it may not be getting it. So I'd rather go buy a $20 bottle or $10 or spend a few hundred dollars on that in the long run save thousands because I'm not overspending on maybe sugar and sweets or whatever or extra food that I'm my body needs to be fulfilled with a certain nutrient, a certain herb that God created. Man, look here. Um, I know a lot of people say that, you know, all this natural stuff, but nobody really gives glory to God. I mean, not, not a whole, I know some people in my personal circle that do, but not, you know, a whole lot of people just really glorify God. They just want to get out there and sell it. But I'm here to tell you the truth, man. It's here. It's here. In, in God's pyramid, you know, God's uh, pyramid of foods that he told us to eat, man. That's, man, right there, chapter one. So, amen. So, um, yeah, and I mean, I think this is part of being a wise steward, you know, and um, yeah, and, and at the same time, you know, like I said about the certain nutrients that our body needs to be fulfilled with, those nutrients also come in, in other forms too, in, in isolated forms like that, you know, um, I do, um, you know, say consider that too, Um but the thing is, now too, also be on just with say be careful because there is, um, you know, maybe people have to sell um, fake nutrients and they sell legal stuff in bottles. So be careful when you buy from me. I, I personally just go to, you know, the herb mart down here. Down here. So they got like a couple in Texas. I mean, the couple in Texas, as far as I know, in Plano, one in Plano and one in Garland. So it's not a whole lot of Whole Foods, Sprout sells and things too. Um, but I don't, I don't want to hold, buy a whole lot online because some people be, you know, throwing some stuff in. So you got to be careful. Um, but yeah, so that, that's pretty much uh, it today. Praise God. Just um, That's my Bible study in today. And, you know, going back over, um, you know, just like I said, chapter one. Hey, that, that's it. You know, we see that God created everything. Uh, there's no question about it. You know, um, you know, when we, when we got plenty of people who, tend to be atheists and stuff like that, you know, and I mean, really, you know, the, the truth is, you know, you, you can argue all day, but hey, you know, if, if you really want to, if you really want to do the right thing, then, you know, saying it's, it's right here in the Bible. So, um, some things are just, you know, some things are just, you know, not even worth the reading discussing, you know, because, you know, I, I've never been atheist, but I mean, I'm just, like I said already, I just want to let you know, I'm just coming at you trying to help you with things that I believe God has enlightened my understanding is. So uh, whatever else, man, you know, if anybody happened, you know, have not seen, you know, see this video and want to comment, hey, I'll be happy to answer, answer any questions that anybody has, you know, Lord willing, you know, people get on here and uh, see the video, praise God. Well, hey, that's it for today. I, you know, I just want to pray it out real quick. And um, in Jesus' name, Lord, thank you for this day today, Lord. Father, we just want to pray, God, that, this will help somebody, Lord God, to see, Lord, that the wisdom comes from you, oh God. The true way of life comes from you, God. Father, we know in your word, oh God, says that, Lord, to be born again, oh God. And Father, so what must we do to be saved, oh God? Lord, this is the path. Lord, this is a little taste of God's wisdom, God. And we just pray that somebody will follow the salvation steps, oh God. Father, we pray, God, that they will do it the way the Bible said to do it. Uh, Father, just, oh Father, just not only just, Oh, God, ask you to their life, Lord, but truly 
answer to their life. Truly, oh God, go ahead and get baptized, Lord. Truly, go ahead and get the spirit of God and have that power to walk a life worthy of living, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I just pray this blessing today. And, um, you know, I know a lot of times people say, all you got to do is ask, for, uh, ask God to come to your heart. Um, but first of all, the Bible says repent too. Um, it says be baptized. I know there's a lot of you know, arguments stuff about that, but hey, you know, uh, if you're really looking to get right, I know this this is a chapter one, a little test of wisdom, but you know, hey, read that word, check out that salvation. Yeah, you can pray a prayer, you know, uh, from your heart, whatever God put in your heart, you know. When I prayed my first prayer, I mean, I was just, I was repenting for a long time. I was just like, Lord, forgive me for this, and forgive me for that, forgive me for this. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that, that's how that's how serious I was. So, you know, uh, whatever comes out your heart, man, you know, that and just, hey, to God be the glory. Um, I'm not going to sit back and try to tell you how to pray. You know, I just don't really believe in that, honestly. Um, the Bible says repent. We, we all know what repent is. And, hey, that means you ask God for forgiveness. You know, you ask God for forgiveness. You know, the thing is, like, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have to say a long prayer if you really repent in your heart, you just ask God for forgiveness with words and you can turn around and walk that lifestyle, you know, and get your baptism and, and you know, and get the spirit of God, too. And, and I just want to elaborate on that a little bit, too, because, you know, um, I, I know, I, you know, I, this wasn't really uh, part of the video, but I, I just want to say, you know, I, I believe in doing things scripturally, what, what the Bible says to do. I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you like this. I, I've been to a church where they had. Uh, you know, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost like that. You know, the thing is, it's so big nowadays. But you know, when when, when they actually baptize, it said we baptize in the name of Jesus. Okay? You, you know, and, and, and my, my thing where I have a problem with is, it almost seems like they're trying to bully people into doing it the way they want to do it. I mean, and, and you know, I think the thing, I'm, I'm talking from a person who really didn't, well, I had a little bit of both coming up, so I can't really say, you know, well, I, 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 I'll be honest, I did a favor a little bit, you know, but the thing is, though, when Jesus said do something, and then somebody, and then the way they did it was different from the way Jesus actually verbalized it, I'm sort of thinking, like, okay, if you got Jesus say that's his name, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And they do it in the name of Jesus. I mean, do you think that, like, <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure Jesus would have been like, hey, man, you, nah, you can't do it like that. I mean, Jesus, I'm, you know, I, all I'm saying is, man, to me, the fact that they actually did it like that, that, that means a lot to me, man, you know? And I, I just want to elaborate on that. And, and to be honest with you, I think I'm gonna elaborate on a lot of my videos too, with with some serious, so some serious man, with some serious real talk, man. You know, it's like just just, just be careful, man. You know what I mean? Be careful. You know, don't. I mean, because you know the thing is, be careful. Like I said, I, I elaborate on that. I, when I say be careful, you know, I know the Bible says be careful for nothing. I, I don't mean, you know, but that that means. Be careful enough as if don't try to be super careful, but it says, but pray. But it says to pray about all that. That means, you know, if something's not working out, don't try to be all perfect to get it done. Like, you know, you don't think you, if you be perfect, I'm going to be all super careful trying to make this work. It don't matter how careful you be. If you don't pray about it, it's not going to work. But you still can be careful in a caring way. Like, be careful, man, you know, how you just allow people to tell you how to get saved and all that. You know, because uh, we never know. Sometimes you may not ever know what somebody's intentions are. But I know that if if they said, I mean, look, I, I'm saying that this is the way they said they baptized in the name of Jesus. That I mean, that is the way they baptized. You know, in the name. Like, it, it actually says... So, you know, I, I just want to help somebody today, you know, and, and like I said, be careful, man. It, it's just, you know, and, and, I, and I've been to some churches out in Dallas a little bit, you know, 
And it's just like, you know, I, I see the glamour, I see all that stuff, you know, and sometimes it makes me wonder, you know, like, really, you know, why why, are they, why is everybody so thriving so much, you know? You know, the Bible says the devil comes to the true people of God in great wrath because, you know, his time is short. So, see, you know, the thing is, his time is short with who? Who's his time short with? His time is short with the people who he has a short time tempting. He has a short time to really try to manipulate, a short time to try to make fall. Like, because see, the thing is, when they say short time, that means that he doesn't have very long to come around a, a person of God. So his wrath is going to be as hard and as great as possible. With Job, he had, his time was short. His time was short. He only had, so what did he do? He came with, at Job with great wrath. So I'm going to tell you something. If everything is real sweet and real candy-like in a church all the time, I know you heard people say this, but I, I bring the scripture to you and tell you that it says he comes with great wrath when his time is short. That means if you know he got a lot of time with you just to mess around with you and watch you, he got plenty of time to, to tempt you and come into your life, he, he may just, his wrath may not be that strong, see? So that's why, that, that's why I, I just want to give you an understanding why when people say, you know, if everything's going good in your life, be careful. I, that that's that's what that means. So according to my interpretation of scripture, it means because the devil's wrath is coming stronger. Like I said, when you're when when he knows his time is short with you to tempt you to try to get you off track to try to make you fall into temptation. So he's going to come very wrathfully. So that's a sign that hey, you know, I'd be on the right track. See and think about it. He gonna come as wrathfully. I mean, through people, through himself. I mean, how many people do you see out here with you know all kinds of other doctrines? But anyways, I, I just want to emphasize that, and and, I, and I'm coming from an open man. I'm coming from an open mind. But anyways, I, I think that's all for today. I just want to put that out there, um, you know, and, and and just let people know, man, you know. To just really study the Bible for yourself, man. You know, I, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't gonna sit here, man, and just try to force you to believe nothing, you know. But just, just study for yourself, man. That, you know, and, and just I'm gonna say it like this: like, what I want to say is, is that don't, don't let nobody scare you or, or pressure you, or don't let the population of an action or a doctrine move you into doing something that you're not really sure. I, I'm telling you right now, man, ain't, ain't nothing worth it. Ain't nothing worth it. Just, you know what I'm saying? Don't do it. Take your time. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey. if you're not sure about some of the scripture, and I ain't gonna keep on trying to bang you over the head with it, I'm saying, if you're not sure about some of the scripture, take your time and really ask God. Really ask, say, God, you know, how do you want me to do this? You know what I'm saying? You know, and that's it. Cause I'm here to talk about it. You know what I mean? Here to talk about it. And I'm, I'm trying to get your relationship with right God. You know, but that's that's all for today. And I just want to share that with uh, guys today, man. Just hope that um, that wisdom was won somebody over. But hey, well, uh, that's it for today. That's Genesis chapter one. I hope you learned about some of the, you know, some of the stewardship skills with, you know, uh, health finance and uh <clears throat> hopefully you know if anybody doesn't really you know walk with the lord you know they would they would uh they would appreciate this word right here and, and hope to you know get closer to god you know what i'm saying like so just appreciate everybody listening today and i just hope everybody uh has a has a blessed day and remember what i said you want to get right with god read that thing for yourself don't let nobody pressure you into doing Hey, I'm gonna tell you, let me say one more thing too. If you don't know exactly salvation plan, read the Bible. This, this is how I did it. I went to a church. First of all, I started as Presbyterian. I'm gonna, just a little quick testimony, but I don't know. Like it just 
it just feel a little bit off. You know what I mean? And then I went to another church, and then something felt something felt more real. You know what I mean? Something felt real, and um, it just you know it felt real. So I, I just like I have this feeling. You know what I'm saying? And because because I'm telling you, man, just like I said, if you if you feel that nervous feeling, I'm telling you, just just read the scripture. That the, and what I'm trying to tell you is like you when you walk with God, you take a step. I repented, I started going to one church, and then I went to another church, and that's when I got baptized, and I, and I got the Holy Spirit. So see, God didn't force me into anything starting off. I just, I felt kind of funny about it. I felt funny, it's like, I don't know, something just didn't feel right. It's like, I just felt kind of like pressured or uncomfortable. But I went to another church, and it just, something felt more like I said. So that's my little, that's my testimony. You know, it just, and you know, I'm telling you, like you, you'll you'll know the feeling on the inside, the the feeling of safety and just everything like that in in the scriptures. You know, like I said, God ain't gonna force you to do anything that you're not sure about. He, he'll make it clear to you in scripture. He'll lead you to a path. So don't feel like you gotta go baptize or a doctor or anything. I'm not saying don't go to church. I'm just saying that don't don't feel like you have to do anything in the word that is not. You're not sure about, so I'm saying, if you're not sure about this right or wrong, it's best not to do it. So I'm saying, you know, um, I'm telling you. So unless you know beyond the shadow of a doubt, that's that's how it says to do it. And and, and I'm telling you, man, it, it, it's the pressure. I think it's the pressure nowadays of so many people doing it with the, you know, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So I'm saying, there's so much pressure nowadays, man. I mean. They can almost make you feel like you ain't right with God if you're not doing it that way. But I'm looking at the book of Acts. It's like, and then I know Jesus said it too, but they actually did it in the name, we by the name of Jesus. I mean, why would you, why would you even take a chance? So I'm saying when, when they tell you this is how I did it. So, I mean, you know, that that's it. That's it. You know, if I see somebody that's an apostle, <laughs> that Jesus said, you're going to die and be a martyr and go to heaven. And this is the way they baptized the people that died as a martyr. Now, now Jesus said one thing. Now, let, let, let's say Jesus said a lot of things too. Like, that's not kill. Do you really think that God will make all the, all the military, all the police, and God's let everybody to run wickedly? I mean, and just kill everybody, do whatever they want to do without having officers to. No, I don't think so. I think God meant don't murder. So but I, I'm just saying, when Jesus said certain things. Come on. He said there was some that doubted in the crowd, too. There was some that doubted. I thank God for my pastor that revealed this to me. Some in the crowd doubted. So. If you read that chapter, he says some of the crowd doubted, and it said that he said baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. He summoned their doubted. So, so I'm just saying, and like I said, the only proof that we have of people actually baptizing that we know were heaven bound were the apostles. They they were heaven bound. They were martyred. We know they went to heaven. We know that what they were doing was right because they went to heaven. There's nobody that went to heaven in the Bible that baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy, and the Holy Ghost. So, I mean, I think that sometimes we take vows lightly. We take words lightly. I mean, and I don't think God does because marriage is a vow. Repentance is a vow. If, if words weren't that serious, then why did God say confess with your mouth and believe in your heart and turn from your ways and be baptized and receive the Holy Spirit? Why did he say confess with your mouth? See, I think we take lightly the words out. Like you said, oh, we don't matter. Hey, man, if you really got an honest heart, man, and you really think that's real, hey, I'm just saying, I think we should take more seriously the words because, like I said, I know maybe some maybe some real people of God that are in, 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 in not really right Think about it. it. It said, 
So like I, like I say, if words were important, then why would God say confess with your mouth and repent of your sins? Confess your mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord, and repent with your mouth. Repent and believe in your heart. So if you if God telling you to use your mouth for certain things, I'm just saying. If it didn't matter, that means that somebody wouldn't even have to even confess with their mouth then if it didn't matter. So I'm saying, so if words don't matter, <clears throat> this, this is a good point for me. If somebody says you got you got confess with your mouth to get a of sins, then so that's just like saying, well, you really don't have to say, God forgive me. You could just say, you could just say, ah oh, man, I appreciate your forgiveness, Lord. He didn't say say it like that. He said, confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ the Lord. He didn't say, he didn't say, oh yeah, it's cool, man. I believe. No, he said, Lord, I believe. You gotta confess a certain thing. So, I mean. I, I would, you see what I'm saying though? Like these words are specific and they are spoken through the mouth. So we, we should take that stuff seriously. You know what I mean? And, you know, I, look, man, I'm going to say it like this. And, 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 I, and I'm taking a little time on this because I, I'll take this seriously. It's like, I mean, don't, you know what I mean? Like, it don't matter how many people pressure you into trying to do something. It's like, I mean, I know people want to have churches. They want to make money and stuff. It's like, but the truth is, man, don't let nobody pressure you, man. Because, you know, you might have to stand for God. <clears throat> well, we all want to stand for God. But it's like, what if you're really wrong? I mean, don't take a chance and let people make you a coward. So I'm saying, don't let people coward you out of your salvation. You know, don't, don't, don't get coward out of your salvation, man. You know, and I've had discussions with people before, too, man. And but the thing with me is though, and I wasn't sure at first, but I said, man, you know, I, I'm not finna, I, I'm not gonna agree with something that I that I didn't know. You know what I mean? But now when I look at it more and more, it's like I see that this is where the heaven bound, only heaven bound people in the Bible baptized. I mean, that I think it's kind of dangerous to change. It's a little dangerous to just to just say I'm gonna do it another way. That's that's dangerous, bro. I, I'm, I'm not finna take that chance, bro. Forget that. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, they baptized some heaven bound people are baptized in the name of Jesus. But I'm just, oh, it don't really matter. Bro, you just, yeah, man, no. Nah, don't. Dude, it's tripping, man. I mean, either it's cowardice or, uh, I don't know, whatever it is. The money, pressure from people, man. I just want to let you know today that, that hey, you know, just because it's sweet, everything's sweet, everything don't mean it is the right thing. That could be the exact opposite because the Bible says it. He comes to great wrath when his time is short. Like I said earlier in my in the you know broadcast, when his time is short, you know his time is short with somebody who is really up with God, close to God. But if you ain't close to God, he ain't gotta come to you all hard. He make everything look good, sweet, you know, flowery and everything. Hey, but hey, I just. One of the, yeah, I was originally talking about Jesus chapter one, but I, I'm glad I had brought that up because before I start this, you know, uh, Bible study, you know, through the Bible, I want to, I wanted to really put it out there, you know, you know, the, the Bible, man. Hey, you know, because without the spirit, you know, you really need the spirit, wisdom of the spirit to get in the ways. So, um, yeah, yeah, hey, you know, um, just remember what I said, man. Don't let no pressure, nothing. On the Bible, man. At the end of the day, it don't matter what your mama say, what your daddy say, anybody around you, man. You got to be a soldier, man. You got to be a soldier, even to the point of death. You know, and Lord willing, we know none of us would want to face that, Lord, you know, God forbid. But it's like, you just got to get to the point. It's like, man, I'm sick of this stuff. Ain't nobody going to tell me to do something the Bible said not to do. If I know plain and clear, in my thing, if I don't know, I ain't, either I ain't going to talk about it or I ain't going to do it. So I'm saying, so if I'm not sure, I'm just not going to do it. Oh God, you know, I know God, God will make a way. If you say, Lord, I don't really know if I got to be baptized a certain way. You say, well, I, don't, I just don't know about this, man. Or it would, even when it come down to somebody to do something else in life, you say, man, I don't know about this. If you don't do it, I guarantee you that God will, bring, God will make a way. I, God will make a way for you so many times. Well, I, well, I thought that I felt like, man, I don't really know if this is right or not. Whether it be a job or talking to a certain woman, I, you know, trying to get married, something like that. 
And I, I said, God, this is right, you know. And I wasn't really sure. And I just back and said, man, look here. I said, if I if it was God, I really believe that God would let me know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is okay. So I'm saying? All that doubt and stuff is not of God because the Bible says it, he don't give you the spirit of confusion, but of a sound mind and power. So, you know, that there, there's some certain feelings that should come along with doing the right thing. And, um, you know, and uh, you know, like I said, don't nobody pressure you, man, for fame, to make you feel like a man. I got to I got to preach. I got to go, you know, up a church, man. Don't let none of that stuff pressure you. Man, look, the, the, the commentary right now, I'm, I'm going to be real. I'm tell you like this. It don't matter the fame, the money, the, the popularity. At, at night, when you're home by yourself and you did the right thing, God's presence, God's presence is more powerful than it all. Amen. I tell you just like that. If God's not pleased with you and he's not in your life and he's, his presence is not in your life, there's nothing, there's no fame, there's no popularity, money. Because guess what? God's greater than all the enemies. So, and, you know, he don't need that to, to get you through life. Uh, or, you know, make you happy. He knows, the thing is, like I said, he knows how to tell you how to be happy without even having certain things. So I'm saying, so, um, you know, so, yeah, that, that's the joy of having God's presence in your life. Because, you know, God will say, hey, you know, you, you need to go, you know, make, go to the store and buy these ingredients and make this food. You might have $100 and go out there and buy some food and you know, it ain't all that good. <laughs> it's just a little example, but uh, anyways, just wanted to express the seriousness of that before I get into this long study here. Praise God. But hey, um, I think I did my duty for tonight. So everybody have a blessed night. In the name of Jesus, man. See y'all later.